all you YouTube crazy people. Today I'm going to talk about Databricks workflows versus Apache Airflow. Honestly, there's still a few areas where technology battles are still being played out and orchestration tools is one of those. You have a plethora of options and this came up recently because of the wonderful Databricks account manager that's assigned my team at work, basically telling my boss, the CTO, that we should replace Airflow with workflows from Databricks, which is ridiculous. And I just wanted to talk about that today. I'm gonna kind of give you a summary of what I think about Databricks workflows versus Apache Airflow right up front. So you can stop watching this video if you want right after I say the next sentences. Honestly, I use both Apache Airflow and Databricks workflows in production today. Together, these tools complement each other and they're not mutually exclusive. Picking one over the other is a really bad decision. Using them both in combination gives you the best of both worlds. Now, before we dive super deep into Apache Airflow versus Databricks workflows, let's just consider why we're even talking about orchestration tools, what we should look for in orchestration tools. And this is kind of my list when I think about orchestration in a data platform context. What do I look for? Why would I use one or the other, one over the other? Well, number one, data flow visualization. If you're thinking about orchestrating a data platform, what it comes down to is visualization. This is probably what made Apache Airflow so popular in the beginning is being able to envision and see an entire complex data platform and pipelines visually on the screen in front of you. It helps with debugging. It helps with understanding what's going on. It's just the best. That's what you need. You need top-notch data visualizations. One of the next things you look for is complex task dependency support. You know, yeah, a lot of the pipelines can be easy, but a lot of them are not. You can have multi-interdependent tasks and you need to be able to do that in a workflow orchestration tool. You need to be able to say, this depends on that, this runs on the first month, that doesn't, this thing depends on these three other things. That's just the nature of data platforms. You need to be able to do that. Of course, you should always have basic retry support. That's gonna be super important as well as top-notch error monitoring and handling. You just gotta have it. You need to be able to know what's broken and how to go look and find the logs and errors. Of course, you need top tier broad connections and integrations, meaning you need to be able to connect it to everything under the sun because most data platforms are made up of a plethora of tools. So you may need to be able to talk to Snowflake, Databricks, stuff on an RDS instance stuff everywhere, EC2, everything else. You just need a huge broad support for integrations for obvious reasons. Otherwise, it's going to break down over time and you need straightforward development. Let's talk about data flow visualizations first. I'm not sure where we really need to discuss that with Apache Airflow, but for the sake of argument and the off chance, we might have some new data hobbits running around. Let's go through the motions. Let's compare Databricks workflows to Apache Airflow from a visualization standpoint. I mean, if you've seen or been around Airflow, which you probably have, this is probably what makes Airflow the number one tool, why it kind of won in the space, why it's the 800 pound gorilla, because it was kind of the first orchestration tool that really gave you top notch visualizations through the UI of your DAGs, AKA your data pipelines and all your dependencies. And we can talk a little about coding at this point, right? If you've seen an Airflow DAG, it's pretty simple. You just kind of define a DAG and Python, you can say with day, you can add schedules, retries, all this kind of stuff, and you can start naming tasks, etc., and branching and all this kind of stuff. But it's very straightforward, basically, you just define a day, define your task, and then you can kind of use some different operators to say this depends on that, this has to wait for that, that kind of thing. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, this is what that DAG looks like visually, the one we just wrote, the airflow. I'm not gonna go through it line by line, but it's just pretty straightforward, and that's the whole point. You can easily define a DAG in Python, and then you can go look at it in the UI, and it totally makes sense what's happening. And of course, when it comes to failures and DAG runs and tasks runs and Airs, all that kind of stuff. Data, our airflow is obviously top notch. It's easy to look at what's failed, what hasn't failed, what kind of tasks, how long they're running, etc. It's just top notch. So what would happen if we did that same data flow visualization in Databricks workflows? What's it going to actually look like? Now, I'm not going to lie. You better hold your breath for this one because I can confidently say I'm a bigger Databricks, ban, Databricks fan than you, but this time this stuff makes my toes curl. This is what that same data flow would look like 
in a Databricks workflow defined in this way. Go ahead and look at this. It just kind of sucks, honestly. Look at it here. Here's our different tasks, all these different job clusters, notebook tasks, this, that. I mean, who wants to define something like this? I mean, I don't know what to say. I'm just going to scroll through it here, but clearly you can see the difference. What would you rather write, an Airflow DAG or that? And I'll tell you which one I'd rather write. I mean, visually, if we go look at it, this is that same pipeline, that same Airflow pipeline written as a Databricks workflow, and here it is. In the UI of Databricks, it has the same sort of setup, but look, it just the visually, I mean, yeah, it's fine, whatever. Like on the surface, it looks the same. You can see what's happening, it's not too bad. But the reality is, like, when you start digging into the Databricks workflow UI, it's just not quite up to snuff as Airflow, and it wouldn't be. Airflow's been around forever. It's had thousands of people working on it over a decade like clearly databricks workflows from a ui perspective they can get close maybe a little bit but they're just not going to be able to keep up and that should not be a surprise to anyone honestly the other thing is like that j giant tumble of json using to define all that that's just confusing you know airflow has just a better way of defining dags and workflows and task dependencies it just seems like a nightmare trying to work on databricks workflows and i do use both like i said in production and Airflow is just a lot more straightforward. One thing I talked about in the beginning was complex task dependency support in Airflow versus Databricks workflows. And honestly, this is where Airflow kicks the butt of workflows. Like I said, Airflow has been around forever. Databricks has not been around forever, especially workflows have not been around forever. And in real life, a lot of times you need very weird and strange, complex task dependency and workflows. And Databricks just is not the best at supporting that stuff. And that shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, it does, Databricks does support simplified condition logic, logic like native branching through if else, but each condition task only handles a binary branch, true versus false kind of thing. There's no built in router or task for multi way branching, so tasks like ABC would require separate condition tasks, so it just makes it a little bit hard. It has limited run if conditions. Databricks offers limited run if options like all succeeded, at least once succeeded, custom, etc. But you can't combine or nest them and flexibility like airflows, branching, or trigger rules. And honestly, for deeply nested DAGs and pipelines that are highly conditional, you would kind of need to break the pipelines across multiple jobs and connecting them via trigger tasks would just not be the same as Airflow. Another thing I want to talk about is the top tier broad connections and integrations. And let's be honest, like it's obvious here what's going to happen. I mean, no data platform is the same across everything. They use lots of different tools. You need to connect to all sorts of different services and platforms and SaaS, whatever. And this is really where Airflow shines. Airflow has a massive ecosystem that's community supply that can touch any tool that you have, external, internal, whatever. It is the best. It's top tier. There is pre-built connectors for pretty much any tool out there. And honestly, this is not the case with Databricks. Remember, Databricks workflows is going to be running Spark tasks pretty much. That's what's going to be good at. It's not really going to be good at connecting to other things like RDS, for example. Although one thing we do have to say in defense of Databricks because they do have Databrick asset bundles, which, you know, do make DevOps, CI, CD bundling of things if you're into that, which, you know, you can argue how much you should go down that road. They have first class support for for all that stuff in Databricks, it's probably better than Airflow. Again, what it comes down to is just use both. Use Apache Airflow, put in Databricks workflows for where that makes sense. If you're using Databricks as a platform, go ahead and integrate that into Apache Airflow. Apache Airflow has workflow operators, etc. So you can kind of use both. Definitely do not pick Databricks workflows over Apache Airflow. That would be bad. Use them both.